I believe we... Ugh, who's calling me? Take the rest of the day off. And we are back. I do apologize for being a day late, but this is Jack Allaire. Hey, gang, how's it going? Oh, more email from uh, Xion. Wait, aren't we Xion? Oh, for Xion. There we go. Is this not porn music? It is. It's got to be. I uh, thought you'd be in. She's not in. She can read it wherever she wants to go. Oh, so we're going to link up computers to do something really cool. It's nicknamed Sprinkle. So we can download something. Well, yes, I would like to go to the lower level. Thank you. No. No, I don't. Oh, yeah, because I wanted to go look and see what the sprinkle was. Which turns out, it keeps telling me that I download things. I don't know where they go. Oh. Plugins. Sprinkle. All right. Yeah. Okay, the X and circle thing still mess with me. You'd think I would have figured this out by now. Alright, so of course, uh, taking the rest of the day off, we're going to try and wander back to the her room. Which, the crappy thing is that I'm not very good at this. Oh, we have a package. Oh, cool. We can go to the hangar. Do any of you remember where the hangar is? Because I don't. And it's fairly obvious. Yeah, we already talked to all these people. So there's not really a whole lot to do. At this point, we've talked to almost everybody. Segment address number 16. There we go. I can't tell if I like this camera or hate this camera. Because it does kind of just slide along with you. But... It also, like, jerks every once in a while and snaps into place. Which kind of confuses me. Oh, hanger. Aha. Nope. Nope. See there. It's like half following me and half doing the metal gear... Metal... Blah, 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 I can't talk. Metal gear solid thing. Where it just kind of snaps back and forth, depending on which direction I'm running. The good thing is, is unlike Metal Gear Solid, it doesn't change the perspective. So you control the character more or less based on where you're going. It looks dangerous. Oh, -ho. And the MWS is the mobile weapon system, I guess, that you've been using this whole time. Yeah, so that kind of Swiss Army knife punch thingy that you've been using. That's what you've got equipped. That's what we just found. Yeah. 
Yeah, at this point, I actually start looking because I finally realized that I can go to equipment. And there it is. It's the funny red arm thing. But yeah, there's nothing to actually equip. It's not like... It's not like Final Fantasy. In, in this case... Oh, wait. I just said it is not like Final Fantasy. Wow. It is not like Final Fantasy in that it's just kind of... At least so far, I mean, granted, we're only a couple hours in, and this is a Japanese RPG, so we might be here a couple hours more learning tutorial. But so far, it's uh, fairly straightforward. But you don't do any upgrading of gear so far. It's not like you get a new, like, oh, I got a new magic fist thingy for my hand. Now, this is one of the places where you can actually grind. And even though the guy tells you not to, he tells you to go gear up to the AGWS. I've read a few things where you can actually just stay in the other, stay in the her normal human form and just practice swinging some stuff around. It's also funny that they give you an ammo counter here. Even though there's no real... I mean... It's an ammo counter, yes. But you're going to reload at the end of the fight, so... And that's really all you can do. I think I might do this one more time. I don't remember, but so you get some experience. So you know, you could have, I could have stayed here for hours, but I, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I'm gonna let you guys watch this next fight while I uh, go get some more red vines. This episode brought to you by Red Vines. Not really, but oh, and they're so tasty. idea? See how fun that was? We gained more experience. And I uh, walked by just in time to watch my cat harf all over the floor. So, yay. Have that to look forward to later. So yeah, like I said, uh, one of the different things I read online is that you can actually just sit there and grind and grind and grind and grind and grind and, grind and earn skill points and experience points. And uh, I would go nuts doing that, though. I mean, one of the, it's, I find it funny that I actually like to grind on a handheld console. Now she's tired. It's time to go to bed. Which, of course, I don't remember where her room is. They're the guys we played tag with. Oh, there's the map. Alright, so we've got to go down. So if we just go down, we should be able to get to our room. Awesome. But why would I go that way? That makes way too much sense. Oh, because that door's closed due to a faulty something or other. 
So now we've got to go down. Ugh. You know what? The camera wasn't bugging me this much while I was... While I was actually playing, but now that I'm just watching back, it's kind of disturbing. All we do is train. There's no motivation. Wah. Okay. Let me let you know that people in the army do not talk like that. Okay, so we gotta go down and then over. Where on earth am I going? Anyways. Hey, those are my quarters. Oh, sorry. Well, it's not like you can get in without the key anyways. Woggling? Oh, the ship we're in. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so I wander around quite a bit here, not really knowing where I'm going. I mean, I know where I'm supposed to go, and I looked at the map, but... It never feels right in my in my brain doing this. That and there's also those that I don't think I was supposed to be able to just walk through. Oh, that's right. We get to play the mini game. Yeah, this is an RPG with mini games. So I don't know. It's kind of like playing the crane game. Which, let me let you in on a little secret, is that when you're playing the crane game and you want to pick up, uh, like, the little stuffed animals and stuff, I used to talk to the guy who used to fill those when I worked at a, a kind of a, a Chuck E. Cheese knockoff called uh, Huckleberry Junction, or not Huckleberry Junction, was it? Yeah, that's what it was called, in uh, up in Michigan, and... One of the things that they always said is that you pack them in tight enough to where everyone's not going to get one, but you pack them in loose enough so that if somebody knows what they're doing, they're going to make it look easy and get other people to go and do it. So what he would do is he would pack most of them in there fairly tight and then leave a few that would kind of like just threads on the end of a piece of cloth to where if you pick one, it lets another thread loose, lets another thread loose, but the whole cloth never quite unravels. And then what he told me is that there are a few things that they do to kind of deceive you. One, they put a mirror at the back. So that that way your sense of depth is thrown all off because you're looking in at yourself. The other thing that they do is that they, they where the rail is, if you look at the rail and then you look at the claw, the claw is offset from the rail because your mind will automatically be set to lining up the rail to where the toy is so if you line up the rail and not the claw then what you'll do is you'll end up dropping it and you'll miss the toy now there are other all kinds of sneaky things that they can do that really doesn't apply but he also said the basic thing you want to do is you want to look at it from a bunch of different angles so you want to line it up from the front and then to line it up on the side you actually either want a spotter someone standing on the side to look at it or you want to actually swing out to the side and get a view from there now, Mr. Holgar, or Driller, or whatever we're calling him, uh, actually wants us to do this to the drill. And for some reason, he's letting this... person that we're playing, uh, this uh, brainy professor... girl, uh, play with uh, heavy machinery. Because why not? I mean, come on. To the women in the audience, I'm sure every construction worker has stopped you while you were walking by and let you operate all the uh, very heavy machinery and uh, tear up some cars and some barrels that are in the way. All right, so actually playing the game, you've got, uh, what, three different camera angles, I think? And you basically push the button to make it go, and then the drill goes down. Uh, 
And all of the camera angles are just slightly screwed. Yay, got one. Then everybody cheers. This is actually kind of fun. I I, I I was sad that this game went away. See, I stopped it too short because of the angle. But the... And this is one of the things that I really have to give to uh, Final Fantasy VII, even though a lot of people really hated that. Is that they hated that they had the ability to play the mini games over and over and over. And I absolutely loved that fact. Because the my main complaint against... Okay. I'm going to throw out there that I loved Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess is uh, probably my second favorite Zelda game. Because most of them I just... I really liked, but there are a few that I just couldn't stand. Now... But in that game, it was like, okay, we're going to learn how to how to wrestle. And they're like, all right, we're going to wrestle. And then you wrestle once, and you never do it again. And I'm just like, but come on. You could have had, like, a tournament and, you know. And I think it's to the point of, uh, I think, uh, a lot of people are, are saying that they're getting tired of the all story. Which is that you are one person, the one who will save the universe. And then you go on to save the universe, and it's like, okay, well, great, you know, I've saved the universe, but I also stopped to rescue a cat out of a tree, and, you know, I helped walk an old lady across the street, and a bunch of different things like that. And what I liked is that the... I like the games where you can take the time and just kind of eh, mess around. And that's... I think that's what I really liked about... Uh, Saint Row the Third is that you I mean there was a story and there was a plot but the vast majority of it was like ah you know what if you don't finish most of the missions what's the worst that's going to happen nothing I mean you're a street gang who took over and became real popular but yeah all right, so I blew up all the stuff. Moving on. Anyways, that's why I like Final Fantasy VII, because they introduced me to mini games, and then they let me play the mini games over and over and over. Why is there a gold room? I don't know. Well, we're back in the... place. Okay, seriously, what are the gold rooms for? Well, I guess if you're building a spaceship and you're like, Hey, what should we color this room? Gold? Eh, that sounds fine. I mean, everything else is this weird white silver color. I guess you can paint two rooms gold and get away with it. Alright, so after... Oh, segment 18... After hours of walking, I have finally found her room again. Oh, cutscene. Flash, grave mistake, Cherenkov. I believe I already warned you about the dangers of the Zohar. You should have been more careful while retrieving it. Yes, sir. I'm afraid there's no excuse for the fatalities that occurred during the recovery. However, we can... That's a trivial matter. Forget it. The problem is that those people touched the Zohar and then vanished. And, in addition to that, you're still transporting it while exposed to normal space. <laughs> because of that, we've had to move the plan up two phases. We can't have the Zohar falling into the government's hands. Two phases? But why are you... We picked up local UMN activity on our EPR radar. The 
fleet is column jumping towards the position of your convoy. They'll cross your vector in five hours, 22 minutes. No, it can't be. Them? I told you, you've made a grave mistake. We Bob Norton made a mistake. Now it's time to erase that mistake. W will they make it in time? Just keep it safe until they arrive. I don't care if you have to send it into hyperspace by itself. Fortunately for you, your ship is carrying that weapon. I don't know what Vector's up to, but... Take advantage of the situation if you can. Excuse me, sir, but they haven't even started field testing it yet. It's too risky. You, of all people, should be cognizant of its power. I don't care if it's unstable. Make them hurry. But... but, sir... That is all. Commander, wait! Commander Margulis! I love that he walks away from the video call. Doesn't hang up, just walks away. And now we're going to go back to Xion. Like I told you before, I can't go anywhere until my project stabilizes. Don't you remember? You know how long you've been saying that? I haven't seen you for two years now. You could at least come home for our parents' memorial. Where's your sense of filial duty? Memorial? Oh, come on. Why are you trying to resurrect obscure ancient rituals? Wait a minute. You've been reading those weird old books again, haven't you? I swear you're so obsessed with those precious books of yours. That is none of your business, thank you very much. Ugh. How many times must I tell you not to quibble about my way of life? What do you mean, way of life? All that stuff's just a stupid old hobby for you. Just remember, don't expect me to take you in when you're old, senile, and all alone. That's terribly rude. Xion. Don't worry about me. Just promise me you'll come home this year, okay? If you don't... All right, all right, when I get some time off. Look, gotta run. See ya. Hey, wait. I'm not going to let you dodge the question again. Hello? Hello? All right, now in case you missed that, she took off her jacket Honestly, to reveal a I shirt that is the exact same, maybe not exact same, but almost the exact same pattern which is just kind of freaky I'm a little tired I think I'll rest a bit no I can't yet I'm worried about everyone checking on everyone means that we're gonna go save or maybe not I don't remember Oh no, I remember this. If you walk even close to the bed, it asks you if you want to go back to sleep. <laughs> I can't navigate this to save my life. So I end up walking back and forth a few times. Okay, what are we up to? Alright, we are up to... 2 hours and 38 minutes. And I still don't know what's going on. I actually think the more I play this game, the less I know what's going on. What's that? I don't know. Oh well. Good night. Let's go to Dreamland.
I dream in black and white too, so I understand how she feels. Whoa. Yeah, and I have a creepy ghost kid that watches over me while I sleep too. Not really, but... I don't get it. Is the... So the... Wait. Did we see the little ghost kid when she almost touched the thing and disappeared? But didn't we also see it before then? I'm so confused. I need to go back and rewatch the first episodes. Figure out when we saw the ghost kid. Well, it's better than seeing the ghost dad. Ugh, a horrible movie that was. Actually, most movies with ghosts in it are pretty bad. Now that I think about it. With the Ghostbusters being the exception, of course. What the? You're all still here? Hey, how's it going? We're trying to pinpoint today's problem, among other things. What about you? Oh, Commander Cherenkov gave me a piece of his mind earlier. Must have been Ouch. a tiny piece. Ha ha ha. That guy's relentless. You act like a bunch of college kids, and what, is Vector run by a Girl Scout? He just went on and on. Man, that's just not right. Seriously. But it isn't right to have the Chief taking all the heat. Still, I wonder why he seemed so nervous. Yeah, the the glowing pods lighting up, that's always a bad sign. Also, I know why he's so nervous, because he's apparently uh, some kind of traitor, maybe? Sort of? I don't know. Now exiting the asteroid field. That's excellent. Prepare to gate jump. I still can't I help but think of the Macross saga and the bridge of the SDF-1 with all the chicks and the, the guy well except for him but like the captain had the the mustache all the dude needs is a pipe and then we're good captain a warning signal oh is that what that really loud annoying noise is the detection system is silent no the detection system is making a lot of noise nothing over here either you sure it's not an error no no it's not what is this? Okay, so it's making noise, but it's on? silent. It's not an error, so an but nobody knows anything. Then what's causing it? Oh, I know. I've pinpointed the anomaly. I know what it is. It's inside the ship, sector three. The calls coming from inside the house. Get out. No, really, it's just Cosmos. Unless the dork decided to set something on fire. It's Initiate wireframe viewer. Cosmos. Cosmos. Dun dun dun. That's impossible. Hey, what the hell's going on? I don't know. It all happened so quickly. Checking it out right now. Cosmos warning status, level one. The bindings are off. Damn it, it's booting up on its own. The countdown has started as well. What the hell? Why all of a sudden? I love that she wakes up to the alarm and instantly goes for her jacket. It's 
like, oh, Cosmos is going to wake up and possibly kill everyone because that's what she did last time they woke her up. And of course now, of course, oh, the phone lines don't work. It gets into some real horror movie tropes here in a minute. This circuit is reserved for Class A and B users only. Class C users, please try your call again later. Once again, currently we are at oh, the emergency level. come three. on! This circuit Why is now reserved all times? for Class A and B users Someone only. Someone activate Class C users, please try your call again later. Once again, Wait, that's impossible. Cosmos isn't supposed to wake up unless I enter the activation code from this terminal. That's the failsafe we integrated. This can't be happening. Not again. It's really happening. It's exactly the same as the last time. That's pretty heavy. Now at least we know where the necklace came from. I actually kind of like the little like a large scale rudimentary CG ships flying the through space. That's the it just sounds really awesome. Breached. Oh, the geodesic structure is being it breached. Be oh no! Being hacked. That's possible? Massive gravity fluctuations! Surface anomalies forming in space-time! Impossible! That defies all laws of physics! Mass, the numbers are completely inconsistent. I can't get a clear reading. Whatever it is, it's huge! That's what she said. It's like a tidal wave! The readings are increasing! It's entering normal space! Captain! Captain! Straight ahead! There it is! Gnosis! So finally we get to learn what Gnosis is, what the whole big deal is about. And it's space whales, space amoebas, space, that one kind of looks like a tick. And it can throw starfish? I really don't get it. But it reminds me of Robotech, so I'm on board. Let's just sit back and watch.
so the gnosis are ghosts that can drain you of all color and then cause you to shatter. That is pretty friggin' terrifying. Like, these things would give either of my sons nightmares. Oh yeah, also if they just kind of pass through you, you also die. Damn, there's one here that looks like he has a giant... Penis. I don't know. So here you are as, uh, what's her name? Shion. So we've got to figure out where we want to go. And we obviously can't fight these things because we can't do spittle to them. And they're called goblins. These things are called goblins. Those do not look like anything, not even remotely close to goblins. I don't even see how you would refer to those as goblins. Goblins are like little weaselly guys that will kill you, yes, but not giant hulking translucent things with none of that. But at least Shion can take a punch. That's a good thing to know. And we're gonna run up here. I love the cartoon pause there. Where it's like, oh, it releases, and then it's a moment where it goes, oh. Oh yeah, I should fall, gravity. Yeah, I remember now. And I'm pretty sure that there's some explanation of why it did that in the fiction maybe to where it's a uh i don't know what is this guy doing he's he's working out oh well he's just trying to do cpr very badly yeah that puddle's just gonna get bigger, guy. Alright, got it. I got it. Run through. Hit switch. Get it, get it, get it, get it! Yes! Awesome. Alright. Uh, empty room. Got it. Check. Yeah, see, there's the one with the, with the, I'm sorry, that's a giant penis. You can call it whatever you want, but. I just, I don't know. And I think I screwed this up a few times. Yeah. There we go, mess up number one. Game over. And then it takes you back to the title screen. How much of a kick in the teeth is that? But uh, that brings part five uh, to a close. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, play on.